Let's go! Second half film study. My goodness. It wouldn't be LSU football if this game did not get chaotic, right? So the score is 7-3. to three. Obviously, LSU played the end of last half very conservatively, which I did not like. I shared my reasoning in the last video, but here we are. So it's interesting LSU came out with uh, Trey Palmer as the starting receiver instead of BTJ, who had a really good first half. So we're starting off here with the draw, and this is the same play that was our best running play to start. And uh, what happened here? Uh, we pick up some decent yardage here on first down, and TDP once again making a really good run and decision to bounce this for a really nice gain. So let's bring it back to right here. Okay, uh, let's see. They're running a twist. Okay, so we actually get a little unlucky because uh, it looks like Ed Ingram with this block. That's a if they're twisting, it's hard to make this block right there. So we need these two guys to clean this up. And TDP did a good job reading that this hole was clogged and uh, bouncing this. Good job right here by Cole Taylor taking on this defensive lineman and getting a piece of him. And this is just really good running by TDP. Also, Jason Hines, while he had a rough game overall, he was a great puller in this game. That is an excellent, excellent block. And he also had a very key pull on Kayshawn's touchdown in the second half. So if I'm LSU... They need to pull their offensive linemen more in the running game. Let, let's put them, uh, let's get seven on the board, all right? So uh, we're, we're showing the same action here, and we're play actioning out of it. He's biting on the run. This is excellent football. This is what we want, and Max is delivering this football right on the money for a Kayshawn Butte touchdown to start the half, Okay. Excellent, excellent, excellent stuff, okay? And, of course, 13, who is a really good corner, couldn't bring Kayshawn down. Not a corner in America would do that. Uh, so because LSU ran that play on first down, they decided to show the same exact action. So if you're a safety or if you're a linebacker and they're pulling the same two players and earlier in the game uh, – we got another run where Chase and Hines pulled and uh, and Cole Taylor pulled as well. They're selling out to stop TDP. So this time, play action, the effectiveness of the running game is what got us this touchdown because these safeties are biting. We want these safeties to bite every single time. We can't run the football well, but because we had a great run on first down with this exact same action, both of the safeties sell out to stop it, and we're able to get an easy pitch and catch touchdown. And look at where Max delivered this ball. Easy pitch and catch touchdown. And what's very interesting is this was legit an RPO because both of these wide receivers are blocking. Something else, we got to be mindful of this as well, okay? This is good right here. I just love having guys like this on the team. This is Lloyd Cole, okay? An occasional special teamer. He's got to love it, man. And you can see this pulling action right here. And you see how they automatically keyed run. Boom. I like that, Jason. Just don't bear hug him. Yeah, we got... I let that go, but you kind of don't want to get even you don't want to even give him the opportunity god just look at how in stride this ball is you just could not throw it any better it had to be a perfect throw i understand it looks like an easy throw but it had to be perfect so now we're up 14 to 3 and lsu is not that great of a third quarter team we've done a lot of deep dives on this with that orgeron but we start obviously the third quarter really well and once again, Cordale Flott, this is just an insane season. It really is just an absolute insane season, okay? It's amazing what better coaching and better scheme does for your nickel. Don't run screens to Cordale Flott's side. He blows it up every time, okay? Austin Williams is a guy that tore Cordale Flott up last year. Flott takes him on, getting held... 
and makes a nice play. It's ridiculous. Let me preface this by saying I don't care about Player of the Week honors, okay? But it's amazing how often they get it wrong for LSU. So last week, B.J. Ojolari was SEC Defensive Lineman of the Week, and he did have two and a half sacks, and he did play well, but Jaqueline Roy had a better game. The same thing is true here. DeMond Clark got SEC Defense Player of the Week. It should have been Cordell Flott. Uh, DeMond Clark's fumble return doesn't happen without Cordell Flott. Once again, a lot of people just view this as very meaningless awards, which is fine. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, they are meaningless. Uh, but still, uh, it, it should have been... Because look, DeMond Clark gets a tackle for this right here. All right? When, you know... Once again, it's a good play. We, we stop them uh, on an underneath route. They're not getting a first down. But 99 out of 100 linebackers are, are getting half a tackle right there. All righty. So we get to this third and three. And this is one of the few times we played man coverage. So Will Rogers gets exactly what he wants. Okay. They're running man coverage. And uh, yeah, this is. We're bringing a blitz right here, and he just hits an easy slant route here. Good tackle by Cam Lewis to make sure this doesn't go for a big one. So we move ahead here to the second and four, and they're driving down the field on us, and we switch back to this four-man look. So four-man, basically one high safety. Okay, and we pick it up here on this angle. This is just the beauty of Eli Ricks. You can't play this any better. Okay, shield him to the sideline. And even if Polk catches this ball, he would have been ruled out anyway. So, really good coverage there by Eli. All right, so let's break down a few things about this play. Okay, so LSU gets in the four-man front here. It wouldn't have mattered if they were in a three-man front because McLaughlin got beat so bad on this play. Okay, it does make things a little easier for a quarterback, though, if you are in a four man front, because that means it's one less person in coverage. So understand if LSU moving forward goes back to a four man front on third and longs, you need your guys to be winning these one on ones. And if we're in a four man front in a clear pass rushing situation, while Neil Farrell in particular had a great game. We need this to be Mason Smith and Jaqueline Roy, okay? We need our best pass rushing defensive tackles in this situation because they know we are only bringing four. There are no blitzing linebackers. It's pretty clear to see. So the first thing is we got to make sure our best pass rushers are on the field. The second thing is, you know, B.J. Ojolari has had a good season as a run and chase uh, sack guy and a, a, a twist sack guy. But he's not really getting off the edge fast and beating people on a traditional rush. And one thing I've noticed is if you stop it right here, okay, he. Uh, this is something I've just seen in, in, in evaluating him. He's been late getting off the football. His get-offs have not been all that great. You notice Ali Gay is already out of his stance. Joseph Evans is already out of his stance. Neil Farrell is already out of his stance. And Ojolari is still in his stance. So I don't know if he's having an issue seeing the football, but he's getting out of his his stance a little late. But either way, we get away with a big one here, okay? If you're McLaughlin, you had a really good game, uh, but you got lucky here. You got very lucky, okay? We'll take it. Derek Singley's not healthy. Does Sting get beat on that double move? Probably not. Like Aaron Rodgers said, it's hard to not be romantic about football. Armani Goodwin, your fastest back. We're getting him sprinting to the outside. We beat the defensive end. Good block to the outside here by Jack Besh. Good work. Uh, let's see. Coy got enough right there. Good stuff. Good run on first down. I love this guy right here. Second and uh, Carter Sheridan right there. O'Dowd, one of our backups. Austin 
Thomas right there. I would have liked to see us go tempo there. But we took Goodwin out and we brought in Kiner, which is fine. Okay. And we're handing the football off. And we get the first... Uh, he spins out of that good spin. Now we got you in, in space. Uh, you better beat him to the corner. You better beat him to the corner. And he does. Does he beat a better player to the corner? And then he tries to hurdle. That's That was just... This was just a mess from the get-go. Okay. First thing is, it does look like an RPO, okay? That would have been there, okay, to Devonta Lee, all right? We hit him. We hit Devonta on a touchdown last week, and, and guess what? We had these safeties crashing, too. So the first thing is, Max probably should have kept this and thrown this, okay? Uh, safety would have been right there, so it would have been bang, bang, but it, it was there, okay? Second thing is... Um, let's see. So you spin out of this. It's second and one. Just bang it up in there and get this yard. Okay. Because if you did not beat this guy to the edge, it would, it, if he would have tackled you right there, it would have been close to not getting a first down. But because Kiner is special, he was able to get the edge. And you just can't hurdle guys. Okay. Once again, I, I said this about DTR. It would be uh, disingenuous to not say this about our own guys. Um, you can't hurdle right there. And social media, you know that hurdles get a bunch of clicks on social media. You don't want this, okay? First and 10, play action again. I like it, okay? So they sink back, and Max does a smart thing here to just hit... Armani good one underneath. Okay. It's good seeing this actually happen. It, it changes everything. Okay. So now they're bringing guys to the line of scrimmage here on second and eight. And they actually bring a corner blitz here. Okay. Let's see what happens. Well, we pick it up really well. This is really good blitz pickup, and we have Max throwing off his back leg, and we're getting a ball complete here to Jare Jenkins. Good job by Jare to work his way back to the quarterback. Second down and 11, and now they're blitzing a lot of people, and we pick it up really well. Really good offense right here. Throw the football quickly. It doesn't look pretty. But that's really good blitz pickup right there. Great physical catch right there by Jare Jenkins to bring that in. And making his few snaps count. Okay? So Kayshawn's on the bench getting a third quarter breather. I'm actually okay with it. I, I really am. I don't like a wide, wide receiver rotation. But middle of the third quarter after he had a long touchdown, I'm okay with it. I just think, though, if, if you're going to do the body preservation thing and watch snap counts, you can't have him be a gunner on punt team as well, even though he's really good at it. Uh, so here we go. It's third and seven. And uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so they back out of it. And we are protecting the heck out of this three-man front. Good stuff. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, trying to figure out what we're doing. Good job by Max extending this play. Good finish by Cole. I like that. Okay. So it's third and seven. Good run right here by Max. Boom. And he got crushed here. Okay. So LSU decided to punt. They get a touchback here. Okay. Okay. Go look at the fourth down win probability model uh, with AI Sports, and it was actually a toss-up here. I get it. I, I'm just an aggressive guy on fourth down and plus territory. That's just how I roll. I Once again, Ed Orgeron 
doesn't see this the same way uh, as I do. Max Johnson's playing well. Our offense is playing well. We we have them on our, on their heels. So we get a second and nine here. Um, and once again, you know, it's it's up in the air. And good play. Micah Baskerville, good stuff. We actually got a little unlucky here uh, that this was not picked off, okay? Once again, he was, and this goes back to the Austin Williams throw from earlier in in the first half, why I said to not panic, because uh, he completed this exact pass to Austin Williams over Micah Baskerville's head. The route was different, but, and this time Baskerville got his hands on it. They almost caught it. We almost caught it. And he almost caught it again. <laughs> uh, but that's what we want. We want them trying to fit that ball into tight windows. And we want our ball hawks to get up there and pick that football off. All right, so it's third and nine, and we get back into our four-man rush. And now we have our better pass rushers on the field. And we get Jaquel and Roy making a big play right here. Okay? In a three technique, he's so he's the best at this on this team. The swim move to the inside. This is a good thing about playing a pocket quarterback is we know he's not going to try and run for this first down. So when you play a pocket quarterback, you can attack this way or this way. Contain is not as important, especially if you're a defensive tackle. He swims over the top, and he makes this play. This is vintage Jaqueline Roy. I say vintage. He's only a second-year player. But still, that's, this is what he's known for. So now it's first and 10, and I think this is the bomb touchdown. It is, okay? We're getting great pass protection, rush three, drop eight, and Max has all day to throw this ball to a wide open Trey Palmer, and we knew it was good, okay? He could have fair caught this, and he catches it, and he could just walk back into the end zone. All right, so once again, Dan Orlovsky um, and Bob Wachusian and Chris Budden, I really like their broadcasting team. They call it a really good game. And once again, you know, we want to hit these explosive plays. And this was just a, a coverage bust. That's all there is to it. And what's very interesting, okay, we teased this um, in the last episode that this was Max Johnson's first ever throw to the deep middle of the field, okay? So in all of Max Johnson, he's thrown close to 300 balls now. This is the first time he has ever thrown a pass to the deep middle, okay, uh, of 20 yards or more. We're going to have teams that are going to play cover two and attack you and, and force you to hit this deep middle right here. And uh, you're not going to have all day to throw. You're not going to have a three-man rush. So, once again, this is a give-me throw. And uh, we'll take it all day, every day. Okay? Alrighty, so let's move ahead here to this touchdown by Makai Polk. First thing is, I have to give LSU a lot of credit. The third quarter has historically been the worst quarter under Ed Orgeron, in particular on the defensive side of the ball. Well, because we dominated the quarter offensively, it didn't really matter, uh, scoring two deep touchdowns. But once again, this was another rough third quarter uh, for LSU, okay? So we get a little unlucky, or we get lucky that Mississippi State earlier in the quarter missed that touchdown and obviously we got to stop mixed in there but then we give up this coverage bust my best guess is LSU should be in three high right here and Eli Ricks should have been or or covered three and Eli Ricks should have been covering this deep area of the field and I'm thinking he thought safety help was going to be over the top it's really hard for the safety, if he's playing straight center field, to be over the top of this right here, okay? Plus, you got to give Will Rogers a lot of credit. He looked left 
first and then worked backside second. So Eli Ricks has probably got to stay with Polk here. Once again, I don't have the defensive calls, but we need Eli Ricks to be there. There's no way that the safety can get over the, over here, especially since Rodgers looked left. And, um, and yeah, it's looking left. So this was a rough quarter for LSU defensively. Yeah, they got the stop in the middle there, but Mississippi State, thanks to a, a really bad miss by Will Rogers, should have had two touchdowns this quarter. And that was a game changer. That was a big miss earlier in the quarter. So once again, LSU's third quarter woes continue. It was a better third quarter because offensively we were dominant uh, in this quarter. And uh, that's in large part to Jake Peets calling, um, once again, his best game. And his best quarter was this one. Let's go. So fourth quarter. We had to get you another let's go, baby. I'm looking at you. Thank you for helping make this channel the coolest thing. We've already done a third quarter, but now this is where a lot of you uh, got really frustrated with how LSU closed this game. All right. So after what was an up and down third quarter, obviously a good one offensively, not so great defensively, we really need to close this thing out. So what does Jake Peets decide to do? Well, he decides to call yet again an absolutely genius play. Okay. So remember this action, Chase and Hines and Cole Taylor pulling. This has been giving the safeties, you know what, but this time they bite on it again, but instead of going deep, we throw a quick screen to our best player, and we're throwing them another different look, and now we have Liam Shanahan leading away. Boom! Good kickout block. And Kayshawn, instead of just cutting this up right here, he, he decides to bounce it. We get a good block right here by Austin Deculus. This is just genius play calling. So now we go heavy here on this third and one, and we bring Jack Mashburn in the game. And Jack actually had a really good game as the blocking tight end. There was questions about what they were going to do without Nick Stores, who was a really solid, not only blocker, but special teamer. So now we're in third and short. Once again, I'm not in love with uh, tightening your formation, but it worked against Mississippi State. Okay, so we get this third and one. And we're obviously handing this to TDP. We get another good block by Jack right there on the backside. And now we got TDP getting in here and getting enough for this first down. Obviously, Ed Orgeron's a little frustrated. You want to get more yards there. You don't want it to be that close. I think Deion Smith actually stepped on Ed Orgeron's cord here. Or he got hooked uh, by Ed Orgeron's... <laughs> I think Deion Smith... Got a piece of Ed Orgeron's headset there. So we're blocking this well. Good job by Cole helping seal this defensive end. And let's see where the mistake was. All right. This is a tough block for Chase and Hines to make. And this is just a tough block for right guards to make in general or just any offensive lineman. Getting to the second level and turning this backer inside. So what you want to do is try your best to work to this side and turn this linebacker in. And instead, 44 just blows Chase and Hines off a little too easy right there. If we would have gotten more of 44, Cole Taylor would have had a better shot of blocking 44 here and he still had the opportunity to make this play, and we didn't get it, okay? If we do, we are cooking with some really good grease right here. Bradford in, Dellinger's back in at left tackle, and um, that's why it's important to not get folded up. Okay. Really good blitz pickup here. Oh, Dion's got to catch this. That's a bad miss right there. And it was a rough day for Dion overall. He obviously made a few good, difficult catches. But you, you, you uh, once again, he's a true freshman. This is going to happen. He was really hyped playing in his home state of Mississippi. 
But you notice we get good protection here. We were struggling with this action, and we pick it up. Good stuff right here by Corey Kiner. Or let's see, is this Josh Williams? I think this is Josh Williams. So good call right here to bring in. Is this Williams? Yeah, I think so. Good job right here to bring in a better pass protector in crunch time here. We get a perfect pocket. Well done. Really well done. Okay, and um, you just got to make this catch. It's a difficult catch. It's this ball is steaming. Also, it might have been deflected right there, uh, but we got to have it. We got to have it. It might have been deflected right there. It's not necessarily a do or die proposition either that LSU pick up this third and eight. So I probably, once again, uh, I, I this. This isn't an LSU thing. This is just an everybody thing. I would just not blow the the time out there. I would just try your best, take the five yard penalty, and 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 see what you could do on third and thirteen. Okay, because then it allows the defense to call their best play as well, and they come out in a look that we really haven't seen this game. Okay, so let's see what happens on this third and eight. One thing I like about Deion Smith is that he gets out of his breaks really well. Better chip right here from Cole Taylor. I honestly don't remember what what happens here on this third and eight. Max Johnson throws a ball to the outside, and it is nowhere close. Once again, this is not Max's best ball. Look, it comes out funky too, okay? Clean pocket, really no pressure here. None. Okay. Good pass protection. Jason Heinz, great job picking up this twist. Good job. They spin out of it, but still, this is as clean of a pocket as you're going to get. And this ball just comes out funky. And it was there. BTJ did a good job making contested catches all day long. I like the play call going to BTJ on a comeback route. That's just not good. And, and once again, we go back to it. Max Johnson throwing on time to outbreaking routes. This just isn't his strong suit. This is nowhere close. And we had what we wanted, and Jake called a really good play. This had been working for us. This was a chain mover. There's just nothing we can do about that. And now we, 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 we lost a timeout. Let's see from this angle here. And also, this is their best corner. So this was the same play we ran in the first half. Uh, oh, it would have been bang, bang. But you got to... I mean, I think what happened there was Max didn't want to give up a pick six or, or, or a pick. He was a little too conservative there, which is why he just sailed it. Uh, but this is the beauty of college football. You have players that do crazy things, and we get a personal foul jumping the shield penalty. This would be a good time. Once again, Greg McMahon is all over this stuff. You cannot jump the shield to block a punt, okay? It's a safety measure. You can't do that, okay? So he gets crushed while at the same time costing basically your team the game right here. So once again, Mike Leach, not really a button-up coach. I mean, his teams do these things quite often. So we're throwing a screen out here uh, to Malik Neighbors. Trey Palmer, uh, good block there on Aaron Brule. Uh, good job right here by Malik Neighbors. Okay. See what he could he have done more with this? Yeah, he just kind of ran into him. Okay, once again, Malik's probably very nervous. You know, this is only his second game. Um, so here we go, second and six. See what happens here. Okay, running this ball to TDP. Good run. And let's see. 
This is good blocking, too. Okay? Good read by Max. RPO was not there. Okay? Aaron Brulace uh, coming off the edge hot. And uh, he does a good job squeezing this gap. We do a good job taking these yards. Good job by TDP getting skinny and getting the yards he could out of this. So now we get to the third and three touchdown. And, man, I... <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I, I think about LSU football all the time, obviously. Okay? Uh, I, I, I've thought about this play long and hard. And there are so many. This is one of the most chaotic uh, LSU plays I think I've seen in quite some time. Um, and that's really saying something. Okay? So, we knew that they were bringing the house. Okay? We knew it. And a whole lot actually went really wrong as far as protection is concerned. I feel really bad for both of these guys. That's so unlucky and that hurts so bad. It's one thing that gets blindsided. It's another thing to get blindsided with friendly fire with your own guy. I'm happy for Cole Taylor to get this touchdown. Okay. One thing though, this is the Brad wing situation Oh, my God. If Brad Wing's thing was a penalty, we are so lucky this did not get flagged for premature celebration. It's a bogus penalty. Let the guy celebrate. It's the same thing going on in the NFL. It's stupid. Uh, once again, I'm not being that guy that they, they should have thrown a flag. But if Brad Wing's situation was a penalty... They could have been justified in throwing a flag there. I'm glad they didn't. Here we go. We get the all 22. We'll get to the protection in just a second. But I do believe Max Johnson was trying to throw this ball to Kayshawn Butte. Okay? Now, it's a difficult throw because this guy is sitting center field. He's playing quarterback spy, but also undercutting anything short. Also, understand from this point forward that... If you're in third and three, LSU's got a great field goal kicker. This is within his range. Also, you want to all-out blitz because if you get a sack, you're forcing them to punt on fourth down. So, from this point forward, if you're Jake Peets, you need to let your offense know that more than likely teams are going to blitz at this portion of the field. The second thing, we'll get to protection in just a second. Um, we do get lucky that, once again, Forbes, their corner, who had a good day overall, uh, we do get very lucky because, as you see here, Max is throwing off his back leg. I understand making this mistake now, but it makes even less sense because we made this mistake on three separate plays in the first half, okay? And where the mistake essentially happens is, guess what? Zach Arnett said, look, last year, Chase and Hines was the one who blew the assignments on A-gap pressures. We're going to attack him in crunch time when we need a play to be made, and that is exactly what they do. So the adjustment LSU made this game was for the running back to protect interior pressure, which he should have. The only problem is we miscommunicate this again. One of these guys needs to pick up the A-gap pressure, and the other guy needs to pick up the B-gap pressure. But what happens? Both guys go to pick up the B-gap pressure and let the A-gap pressure go untouched for a a another play. You can't have this happen again, okay? And that forces Max to throw off his back leg. Now... Give TDP credit. He was able to make a last-second adjustment to pick up the A-gap guy, and uh, that's good. Okay, we're able to get just a piece right there, which is good, but it's still late, and Max is forcing to throw this football off his back leg. We, I don't know what happened here. This happened with Ed Ingram and um, Corey Kiner in the first half. We kept making this mistake, okay? Have the guard pick up the A-gap and let the running back pick up the B-gap or vice versa. But instead, both of our guys go to the B-gap and the A-gap guy is coming through untouched. And from this angle, it's kind of tough to see. But 44 was right there getting a hit on him. Okay, so Max is throwing off his back leg 
over the middle. And let's look at his head. Yeah, he's not looking at Cole Taylor. He's looking at Keishon Butte the whole way. Okay? And also the umpire. Oh, my God. That's just... And that's a hard hit. That is a hard hit. And they don't see each other at all. Like, he targeted his own guy. I really hope they're okay. I really do. That sucks. I... I... I think he went I think he was knocked out cold after that play. Also a very underrated storyline was Avery Atkins in this game booting these balls through the back of the end zone, knowing that number five has returned a kick uh for a touchdown this year. So it was very important because our kickoff unit just hadn't really had to cover a whole lot this year. So good stuff. And that ball was blasted. That was his best one of the day. Alrighty, so we get a third and two. And if it is in your heart's desire, feel free to drop a super chat if you're watching this on a premiere. Or you can always hook us up with that Venmo or Cash App, baby. So we try and run this twist. We go to a four-man front right here. And uh, once again, it's a little too easy for a third and two. Uh, they get Cordell right here. I wouldn't mind him being more aggressive and being closer right here so we're not just giving away this out route. But when you go four-man front, it just gives you more space, you know, to throw the football. There's less guys uh, back there in coverage. Give it to him. Good play call. Good open field tackle by Flott. And uh, they they pick up the first down here. And I probably would have stayed in a three three-man front. I, I would have knowing how quickly they get the football out of their hands, okay? So this lets Will Rogers know that this is man coverage right here, okay? And they actually call the perfect play here against this. Screens work better against a four-man rush, and now they are blocking this perfect. And now we're just hoping BJ, who made a tackle on it earlier, could chase him. He's just not going to make that play. Good job by Jay Ward making this play right here. They just called the perfect play there on third and two. There's just no other reason, you know, spend any more time on it. The running man coverage, Eli Ricks did what he could. And because they were in man, we weren't able to switch off. And Darren Evans is now in the game. You know, we're running a bunch of plays, so we got to rotate guys in and out. We rotate our guys out. Mason Smith and Roy are out. Now we got... Farrell and Evans in they're just not as good uh, of a pass rushing duo as our as the other two but once again you know we're, we're tired so you know you just got to kind of roll with the punches here okay Will Rogers back to throw their running mesh and well what do you know <laughs> that was still there again so that's why they came back to it and um uh, we try and pass these routes off, and we actually do get communication here to pass off this mesh, and this was just good wide receiver play. DeMond Clark thought he was still going to go flat. Instead, he just sat right there in this little pocket, and that's just good wide receiver play right there by Makai Polk. And good job by DeMond Clark getting there eventually to make this tackle. So this is a good thing. You know, at least it's a four-minute drive. No explosive plays. I'm fine with that, okay? So time is starting to become a factor if you're up by three possessions. And defensively, you just don't want them to score quickly, okay? We just, especially with the way our offense is playing up to this point, you, you take this. So... Once again, this drive is not a disaster by any stretch of the imagination, even though they do eventually score. So right here, DeMont Clark did a good job right here at least flattening this just a little bit. Okay, the throw wasn't the cleanest. It was a little bit behind him. And I think it was because Will Rogers, no, it was just a bad throw. It was behind him. So if he would have thrown that in stride, does he get in? I'm not sure, but this is just really good stuff right here by Major Burns. 
not letting them get in right there. So here we are, it's third and goal, and they actually had this play work in the first half. Essentially, it's just you're you're running a pick, and they're they're getting a two for one because we're playing man coverage right here. So this wide receiver picks uh, Cordell Flott. He works over the top, and Austin Williams. It's a strength. Can he get in on Demon Clark? He does. That's just a really good play right there by Austin. I, I give him some good credit there. So here we go. Um, let's get a few first downs and win this game. Okay, and as you could tell, Max Johnson is destroying it in the second half. Three touchdowns of 41-plus yards. Um, obviously, a lot of that was aided by some good luck and some bad defense, but Max is playing really well. So this is where... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be critical of Jake Peets because he didn't call a, a great drive here. Okay, I'm fine with the run on first down. Uh, they gave you a light box here, so I'm I'm fine with running on this, especially when we had been showing this action and throwing out of it. Okay, and believe it or not, they actually get what they want out of this. 15 gets underneath. These blocks here, he gets underneath not one, but two. And he's right here to make the tackle. He just doesn't get it, okay? Good finish, I guess, right here by Jason Hines. Okay, if you miss this guy, get a piece of 93. Kind of whiffs him too. But TDP cuts right through. This is a really good run on first down because this play should have been blown up. and It, it might have been an automatic run call here but if this was an RPO safety was biting down on this boom it's there again they bit every time on this okay so maybe the right decision here I, once again I don't know the play call and maybe Jake wanted Max to keep this and, and, and throw it but we get our best player right here against probably their third or fourth best corner in the slot. That's an easy pitch and catch right there. We also had this up top, too. Oh, we didn't see the safety, though. Let's see. Yeah, safety was still deep center field, so that's still there. Um, but still, it's a good run on first. Playing really well. We have a favorable down the distance right here. And... We are getting a light box here, but we know they're going to be blitzing, and we're pulling again. We're showing the same action, and this play just gets blown up, okay? It's just blown up, okay? I know it's easy to talk about LSU's offensive line. This is not on them. This is not on them here because if these guys are attacking downhill and you're trying to pull, they're going to win these battles every time. Okay, this looks like it's a bad miss by Cole Taylor, but the dude was already in the hole. There, there was just no way. Maybe TDP bounces this way. There's just nothing here, though. There's nothing here at all. And maybe Max, once again, is supposed to pull this and throw this ball to Kayshawn. Okay? Safety is playing back here. So, you know, maybe this is an easy bounce read when you see all this trash right here. So maybe he should have bounced this way. That's not bad right there by Cole, though, to, to still clean him out and, and get something going. But these guys are just keying run. Liam's getting blown up here. We're just, there's just nothing there. There's just nothing there. Okay. I just did not like that call. I think you got to throw it there. I don't think you can go run, run, pass. So now we get this third and six, and they blow a timeout. And now they know we're going to throw. Okay. And they're able to call whatever defensive call that they want to call here. Okay. So linebackers are playing off. You have to think at least one of them are going. Okay, now, Max makes a really good pre-snap read right here. Brule, who's their best blitzer, um, 
they start to creep up here. Okay, so third and six. Max is making some type of check here. Okay, so now he is calling out the protections. Okay, basically saying, make sure our A gaps are covered. Okay, so we know that they're probably going to blitz. I doubt that they drop eight here. Okay, uh, when the blitzing has been working so well for them the second half. So third and eight, third and six, excuse me. And let's see what happens here. Okay. We snap it. And of course, they're bringing pressure. And we need Max to deliver this ball to a wide open Jack Besh. And he throws it behind him. And that's a catch. They ruled this incomplete. We'll show you the other angles in a second. But the bottom line is when it mattered the most, we picked it up. Look at this. They bring everybody. Okay? Good job, Chase and Hines, squeezing in these A-gaps. Okay? Who cares if they have an unblocked guy? At least it's coming from the edge. Max, we just need you to make this throw. And Jack runs a perfect route. And you do that. Okay. I know it's cruel, especially considering Max was so accurate and so great this game. You've got to make this play. You've got to make that throw. And he was frustrated about something with the offensive front. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Once again, I, I've always found this to be interesting. Uh, when players do that, it's normally on them. That's a catch. That ball did not hit the ground. And I saw Jack Bash tweet out, did you guys think it was a catch? I think that's a catch. And I normally side with the wide receiver anyway if it's 50-50. That's incredible. That's some Jarvis Landry crap right there. I mean, the fact that this is... Uh, I can only think of Jarvis Landry being able to make this type of catch. And he's wearing that Jarvis number 80. That is just cold-blooded. That is a freaking catch. Wow. That's unreal. So we get unlucky that it doesn't get overturned. Okay? But that is a catch. I didn't like going run, run, pass. Okay? Now, full disclosure, those first down plays were RPO motions, right? So maybe Max could have kept it and threw it. I, I don't know what the calls were. So it's kind of hard for me to be overly critical of Jake Pete's in that situation because those were the same RPO actions we saw earlier in the half. Maybe Max didn't want to throw it. Um, maybe there was a read or something. Maybe he was told to just automatically hand it off. But there were options to throw on those first and second downs right there. Bottom line, though, is that he missed the third down throw, and we, we, we've got to have that throw. You, they get a decent punt. We get a decent punt, and once again, Kayshawn Butte makes an excellent open field tackle when we really needed it. Good stuff right there. And as we showed you earlier, his tackle earlier, he had to run the guy down as well. So here we go, first and 10. We get back into a three-man front. Rush three, drop eight. And he decides to take his check down, which is fine right here. All right, just got to make this tackle, and we destroy him. Good stuff. Once again, they're in hurry-up mode, so it's kind of hard to do anything exotic. They're running mesh, Okay. Will Rogers is able to step up into this pocket. And he's just going to take these yards. Okay. Now we need you to make this tackle. We need to, and he just tripped on his own feet. Okay. Good stuff right there by DeMond Clark. So we have Will Rogers running right there. We'll take it. All right. So third down. So it's third and three. And... We don't want to give up an easy check down here. We want to be a little bit more aggressive. So we don't want our linebackers dropping seven yards deep. Okay? We're giving up not one but two options right here. So 
I know they were in hurry up and you couldn't really do much exotic stuff at a hurry up. Good job by Ali Gay getting some good pressure here. How was that hold not called? They did run a center screen. We'll take that. Okay. Once again, screens just aren't as effective on a three-man rush than a four-man rush when your guys are getting more upfield. But even then right here, yeah, I mean, I, man, I, I don't know how you missed that. I don't know how you missed that. Uh, that's a bad holding miss. And I'm a guy that normally says, let holding go. They didn't call holding. They called a legal man downfield. But still, that's that's not a good miss right there. Um, but I'm fine with letting holding calls go if you call it equally on both sides. Okay, so it's first and 15. We get them in an advantageous position. And, uh, you know, once again, they hit check down Charlie's. I, I just think our linebacker drops were a little too deep. That's a little too conservative right there. Once again, I don't have the all 22, so it's a little bit different. But yeah, you can't be this prevent right here. There's got to be somebody, uh, one linebacker or, or safety or whoever, to guard this underneath. That's just too much room. Good rush here by BJ. Good stuff. And once again, we give up this easy check down on second and three. It's just too much space, okay? And then Mike makes a really good open field tackle, though, right there. So now we don't want to give up these easy check downs, okay? Let's sit a little heavier on these check downs. Let's force him to make a throw. But once again, we drop way back. Look, we are further behind. All our defensive backs are way behind the sticks, okay? And it sets up for just an easy scramble right here, okay? I don't understand getting that deep in your drop and just giving them a first down, okay? I, I don't get it right here. It's second and eight. The field is compressed. Just a... So once again, I'm fine with uh, drop eight, rush three here. We're running a little bit of a twist, and it works. We get exactly what we want. Ali Gay, man-to-man. -man. Uh, and he misses it. It's a tough play. Does he need to slow down here? That's uh, just a tough play. Still... What does it hurt to have a QB spy right here? Nothing. We don't want to drop our linebackers. Twenty. I mean, look. Where the line of scrimmage is, you still don't see a linebacker. They were 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 yards back into their drops. Why? Why? That, that's a little too easy right there. Righty. So now it's first and 10. We really need our two big playmakers up in the middle to, to, to make some type of play. Okay? Mason Smith has a one-on-one -on -one here. No, it's actually Roy that gets a one-on-one. -on -one, and we're running a twist stunt. And they throw it so quickly. Good play by McLaughlin. Good coverage. Could they have called P.I. there and it be justified? Maybe. It's bang, bang, let it go. Okay? Let's see. Oh, yeah, he probably still should have caught it. Good coverage, Joe, making it difficult. We get to second and 10. We got a decent rush there on first down. They just threw it so quick. Now, let's see... All right, they're stalemating our guys. Not really getting anything uh, pass rush-wise. And second and 10. What a play again by Dwight McLaughlin. I don't know how he didn't get SEC Defensive Player of the Week. And that's a very dangerous throw. Oh, man, if he doesn't get a hand on it, that's the game. McLaughlin's catching it for the win.
All righty, so it's third and 10. Now we really need our pass rushers to step up here. Okay? We're running a twist stunt. Okay? And what do they do? They go back to the wheel. Remember earlier in the half, we were missing this. We blow an assignment and give up an easy touchdown. I would guess this is on Baskerville. It's kind of tough to say, though. It's a really good zone beater, uh, simply because, you know, the, the corner is not used to picking up. Yeah, ah, man. Yeah, I think, I think what happens here, they are running zone, and I think Baskerville picks up this guy, and Ricks is supposed to stay on the outside here. And he has outside containing coverage. You see, and he's running with the underneath route. So is this man coverage? Is this zone? I don't know. We just blow it. Uh, and they're running mesh underneath to confuse our linebackers. Okay. And Ricks is playing man. It looks like it's man. Uh, so Ricks had him. And maybe this was Baskerville's guy. I don't know. Uh, just backside slant against McLaughlin. Good play call to get everyone moving right and just get that little space. And uh, Cordell almost made that play too. Give him credit. Good throw, good catch. All righty, so the most important play of the game. Um, I am a little shocked that they chose to kick the football to Keishon Butte side, okay? I would have kicked it to this side. We have a line, we have two linebackers, neighbors it looks like, and Brian Thomas Jr. And we have Keishon Butte, Jack Besh on this side. And this ball is not even close to going 10 yards, okay? And they touch it first. It was pretty clear that they touched it first and then they recover it. Okay? Lloyd Cole right there anyway. Alrighty, and Mike Leach decides to use his timeout for a review of an onside kick that they clearly touched first. I kind of sort of get it because it's unlikely that you're going to, of course, get the ball back and, and score anyway. But this was, once again, nonsensical coaching by Mike Leach. I, it didn't make any sense to do this uh, because it was so clear. And this also bailed the LSU out of having to run any place to close this game out. You don't know. There could be a fumble. There could be basically anything that happens at the end. So you decided to challenge a play that you clearly weren't going to win anyway. So... Yeah, I, it, once again, I I know we have fans from the opposing team that watch our film studies. Mike Leach was really shook at the end of the first half and the end of the second half. And Ed Orgeron's team was just a little bit more buttoned up. Now, as we always do at the end of the film studies, you guys uh, are seeing like the final stat line of this game. Yes, of course, Mississippi State had more total yards, but LSU by far won this game on a yards per play basis. They average one more yard per play than Mississippi State did. And of course, we won the explosive play battle where last year it was the exact opposite. It was a game of explosive plays on both ends, but Mississippi State was able to just gash us over the over the top so many different times on drag routes. And this was obviously a good welcome change. Now, we obviously have to talk about Auburn, and we'll talk about that for the rest of the week as we lead into uh, this next weekend's game. But I want to give you a really gross oversimplification of the second half. Did Ed Orgeron need to manage this game better in the second half? Yes, I obviously disagree with him on some of his fourth down decision making, obviously at the end of the first half, and then a little bit earlier in this film study as well. 
Also, LSU needs to get a little bit better in the two-minute defense. As you guys saw, I understand playing soft and, and not wanting to get beat over the top. I totally get that. But then again, you can't just give away free first downs that middle school quarterbacks can can complete. I can understand if you're up by four or five possessions letting that happen, but we were only up by two uh, for most of that fourth quarter. And of course, LSU did have a ton of lucky breaks in the second half. Most notably, of course, uh, the missed touchdown throw by Will Rogers. We got very lucky on the coverage bus to a certain degree. And then, of course, the Cole Taylor touchdown featured a lot of luck as well. But now we get to this simple gross oversimplification, okay? It's going to come down to who your quarterback is. And Max Johnson did play better. And the reason why so much of this is going to come down to the quarterback is because LSU is going to be playing against some really good teams moving forward. And obviously, Ed Orgeron touched on this in the press conference. He believes his team needs to run the football better if they're going to obviously end up being an 8-9 win team. But I don't know if they're going to be able to with their current offensive line. So... LSU is going to need Max Johnson to play really lights out the rest of the way. So let's give an honest assessment of how Max Johnson actually played this game. So you guys watch the film along with me, along with, uh, and you guys watch the game. And it's pretty clear that Max Johnson is getting better. Um, you know, this three touchdown a game streak is just insane. The most in the FBS. And, of course, Max Johnson's QBR these last two games have been incredible. Before the Central Michigan game, Max Johnson never registered a QBR of higher than 65. In these last two games, he has put up 95 and 85. And we talked about QBR in the past. The reason why I like it so much is that it is opponent-adjusted. So those are really good performances. However, Max Johnson was not good in this fourth quarter. He was not good, okay? Obviously, the missed throw to Brian Thomas Jr. earlier in the quarter, it was a difficult throw. You got to give him an opportunity to make a play on that football. On that third and eight, especially since we were coming out of a timeout, that throw has got to be made. Obviously, uh, on that final drive, where we went run, run, pass, was he supposed to pull it and RPO it to Kayshawn on either one of those first or second downs? Potentially, but what we can say unequivocally without any question on that third down throw to Jack Besh, it needs to be completed. I can understand if there was a miscommunication, but we've seen Max and Jack complete that ball for third down conversions probably six or seven times just in the last couple of games. That throw has got to be made. So if your quarterback is going to carry your team moving forward, He's going to need to make those crunch time throws when it really matters the most. And Max Johnson in this game simply did not. Now, that does not mean he didn't have a bad game. He had an absolutely wonderful game. It's just when your running game isn't all that effective and your defense had started to play all these plays. Remember, they played 88 plays, which is a lot. We're going to need you to step up and make those throws and keep the defense off the field. And in this game, he missed missed those two huge crunch time third down throws. And let's be honest, Max in crunch time overall has been kind of a mixed bag. We saw him miss a bunch of big time throws against UCLA. Against Ole Miss, he had a critical fourth down interception on a throw that wasn't there. And obviously against Florida... He was really good overall. He also missed some critical throws on that final few drives against Florida as well. So, so far in pressure situations, in particular in the fourth quarter, that seems to be the next step Max Johnson's going to need to make as a quarterback. So, I hope you enjoyed this video today. Obviously, we have so much more to get to. It is Power Hour LSU Bum. Oh, we're doing bison tacos tonight. Let's 